Okay, we're back. Chapter 14, Merrick's My Sequel Book. We are on page 401. 150 pages left. Almost feels like the home stretch. We're in module 7 in the class. So two more modules to go, six more chapters to go. I think we're, we're doing really good. Uh, chapter 14 is more in the area of programming. And um, you need to be aware of this given um, this is an important aspect of programming because it can allow we, you have situations in which bad things can happen or more than one person might be trying to get access to the same record. So they bring up this concept of transactions and of locking. So think of a transaction as a, an event that's happening. You're going to update 30 rows of data and that that um, running that procedure of updating 30 rows of data is um, is a transaction it's a group of stuff you need to do now the data looks one way at the beginning of that transaction and then at the end it looks somewhere else and at different points in time the data table and the database will um, be changed as those transactions happen. So say if you have 30 records you want to update, but the, something happens before the last five records actually get updated. So what happens is the, the program threw an error, something blew up. <clears throat> now, the truth of the matter is all 30 in some situations, all 30 records need to successfully get into the database to call it a done deal. Maybe some situations, the 25, and all you have to do is redo the 5, that can work. But what we're learning with transactions is that do all of these records first, and then you can commit those transactions as a done deal. Or, if something happens, then what you can do is roll back those transactions to the prior state. That way you can then reissue that process that was going to update those 30 commands. So think of it as a do, an opportunity for a do-over. I want to update all this data, but if something bad happens, I want to do over, start over from the beginning. I want the computer to automatically put the database back to where it was so I can then run, run it again. The other concept we learn is locking. And locking basically says, I've got this record. I'm going to lock this record so I have it so you can't change it on me. And there'll be times when you want exclusive use to a process before, so somebody else can't do it. Think about it on the web that many people can be updated, could potentially update the same record of information at the same time. And what you have to do is kind of have a first come, first serve attitude. And you lock the record and say, I have it, update the record, make a commit, and then release the lock. That way, then somebody else can see what that record now looks like and make the changes that are needed. Let's get into chapter 14. Okay, so on page 403, we have some sample code. We have this procedure called test, and you know I'm not liking that. So let's, um, we're going to call this, let's call this test 14, because this is chapter 14. Test 14, and then I'm going to go under bar A. So we're going to drop the procedure, test 14, under bar A. And down here, we're going to call test 14 under bar A. Now, if you are cutting and pasting from the files, you'll see that there's several other check data commands and stuff like that here. Be careful. We're not going to want to execute those guys. So what I want to do is I'm going to delete them. Oh, actually, I want to basically comment out. I'm going to comment these guys out. Or just, I'm going to delete them. Just get rid of them. Okay, so now what I will do is I'll grab the select statement from there that I just deleted. 
And let's see what the result of this select statement is. Run that by itself. So the select statement, invoice ID and invoice number exist. And we're going to be, notice that the invoice number right here is 456789. But what we're going to probably do is we're going to modify it to this value here. And then the invoice line items, we have a line item 1 and a line item 2. Right, we're going to update it to upgrade and upgrade. And let's grab that SQL statement from the line items table. And look at how the data looks right now. And we see we have no records in that table at all. So I want to comment out these two statements right now. And then that way they won't execute. And then I'm going to go ahead and run our test 14A. I'm going to create the procedure and then it'll get called automatically. And you can see that, uh, let's see, let's run it. And we, the call was happening. And we have a situation here where an error happened and the transaction was, in fact, called back. So this code basically says, do this, do this, do this. But remember, we talked about error handling. So we have the error handling set here. Here's the set to true. And basically, it was rolled back that what's happening here is a transaction that was started and a failure happened from one of these insert statements and because the failure happened a rollback happened now if we go and pull the code where we actually delete those record items do some data cleanup I'm going to delete the invoice line items and I'm going to delete the invoice and then let's take a look at the select statement for both so the select statement for the invoice line items this this puppy right here I run that we don't have any records and if I run this puppy right here for the invoice we also don't have any records now since I've already created I'm going to refresh my object browser. I've already created the routine test 14. I can just go ahead and call this right here. Execute that by itself. Transaction was committed. So that means it's successful. That now I can look at those tables, the invoices table and the invoice line item table. Look at the invoice table. I have a record. Look at the invoice line item table. I have two records. Now those records are in there, and what's going to the? I'm going to run it again, and because I'm trying to insert data into something that already exists with the primary keys, it's going to blow up. So I'm going to run this again. Execute. Transaction was rolled back because. A failure happened you can't insert in we could have done some updating but we couldn't insert and what happens is here's the start of the transaction a failure happened if it was successful we commit it that means no errors happened if it was unsuccessful or we threw an error then we do a rollback and here's the two messages that happened okay on page 404 and 405 what we have is we're setting a transaction or starting a transaction and we eventually commit the transaction here we don't have any error handling happen and they didn't create this as a procedure which I wish they would have actually I wish they would have created two or three procedures for this but what they're showing here is save points here's a save point before invoices and then we do this insert so save the invoice table say save it just the way it is right here do this work here's a save point before line item then do this work 
Here's a save point between, for this line item, do this work. Then we have examples of select and now roll back to line item to, to this save point, roll back to this save point, roll back to this save point. So what we're going to do is issue these one at a time. So we're going to use the AP database. We're going to start a transaction. We've just, so we've started a transaction. We're going to create a save point. We're now going to insert the values into the save point. And we're going to sit now insert another save point. And then do another one. Create save point two. And insert values here. So now, Let's do this select statement right here. What's the data look like? Now, let's roll back. So remember, it's 15 invoice <coughs> before line item 2. Now, let's issue this select statement. Now let's issue, let's see, I did a rollback. Let's issue, issue the next rollback. And let's issue the next select statement. And at some point, I think we're going to see a change in data. Boom. One, two, I don't know what's going on here. And before the invoice, we rolled that back. And select here. There. Now we only have one record. And that's the way it was um, initially. So what happens is you can, um, throughout your process, you can s create these save points depending, again, what your business rule is. And you can roll back, you can roll them back to the very, very beginning, the starting of a transaction, or you can roll them back to different save points along the way. And then finally, I'm going to issue a commit and make these records. Uh, it basically ends the transaction. So you get the concept of it. You won't be doing a lot of that for this class, but this is something to put in your back pocket for later. Okay, we're on page 406 and 407. We're still in the AP database, and let's run this select statement that's listed on page 407. And we see we have invoice ID 6 with a value of 0. Let's start a transaction and Let's now issue this command. Update the invoices set credit with that value. And then let's look at this select statement again. It's got $100. And then what we can do is select statement in transaction B won't show up, show the updated data. Um, the update statement will wait until the transaction A to finish. So what happens is, um, th there is, when multiple transactions are working on the same records, one transaction waits till it's finished and waits till the ultimate commit happens. It's kind of hard to show this in here because of the um, doing it independently. I don't understand why they're telling us to do that this way. I would not, honestly, I wouldn't sweat this. Um, we're not going to be using it in the rest of this class other than to show us that transactions are groups of processes and that the transaction will not take place until the commit happens. And when the commit happens, then the next transaction will take place after that. Okay, so now um, it's becoming a little more clearer on this example at the next page. Um, Transaction B, it says, use a second connection to execute these statements. Otherwise, they won't work. And that's what I was thinking. So what's happening is that where we have this transaction working on the first one we just did, then we also have this, just don't bother it. Um, the point is multiple processes can be doing transactions, multiple servers, multiple web pages, can be doing transactions on a single database, a single data table. 
and when it's on that data table, if a transaction's been set, the other transaction won't be able to knock on the door until it's committed. And um, it's just not worth the effort right now. Don't worry about it. <coughs> I've not actually worked with these isolation levels that are described on page 410 and 411. And um, here are examples of isolate read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and level serialized. What I'd like you to do is read through the pages 410 and 411. And the homework assignment basically will be to write what each one of these means. And that will call it a done day for um, chapter 14. Have a good day.